Hi there, uh, my name is Jennifer and I will make this as quick as possible because I don't like the way I look or sound on camera, but I do think this is a pretty important topic and I was asked to make a video on uh, taping of uncropped Doberman ears. I'm currently doing it with my puppy who's named Apolda. She's a little over four months old and she is teething. And that is when you're going to see the ears really misbehave. Uh, one of her ears uh, looks quite good, but the other ear is sort of lifting up a bit. And that's what we want to avoid. I'm not sure if within this shot you can see my senior Doberman to my left. Uh, Berlin did not have her ears taped. And so her ears will stand out to the side. If you Google a movie with, or a television show, I think, with Sally Field in it called The Flying Nun. That is very much what her ears look like. And although she's adorable, it's not something, it's not the way the Doberman ear should sit when we look at the Canadian standard. And I do refer to the standard quite often, so I know sort of what my final product or the result of this work should be. I also will look at Australian or UK Dobermans. Um, a lot of them have very nice high ear sets, which probably have been taped as well. And they're a great thing to um, give you sort of inspiration for what you're trying to achieve. And so what I do, I guess how I get started, um, I like to lay out all of my supplies before I bring the puppy out because she has a very limited attention span. And I also want to make it as quick and positive for her as possible with lots of treats and lots of praise. And to be honest, she got used to it very, very quickly. It's not, it's not something that really bothers her. She doesn't like to be held still, just like she doesn't like to be held still when I dribble her nails, but she got used to it very quickly. And so I guess I'll just let you know sort of what I do first. Um, the most important product, and it was actually given to me um, by somebody who has a working line Doberman from, I believe it's from Sweden. And this is uh, Leucoplast, and it is a medical tape, latex tape made in Germany. Um, I don't know if it's available here, but I asked a friend of mine who has another working line Doberman from Germany that she taped here within Canada, and she used a product called Johnson & Johnson Zonas Tape, Z-O-N-A-S. And it's another porous human grade tape and she had really good success with that. So that's obviously the most important product you want to have on hand. Um, I also will cut three strands or three pieces of tape in advance um, just so they're ready to go because the method that we're doing is called the uh, chin strap method. And so it will require three pieces of tape and it will depend on the length of your dog's ears. You usually start between three and four inches, uh, depending on their age and that sort of thing. And I will cut two pieces of the same length and one piece that is smaller. And I'll be able to show you, once I bring the puppy out, what I use them for. Another, uh, probably more important than anything, is making sure that the dog's ears are clean before you start. Now, I, I will use, oftentimes, this is a veterinary ear cleanser. I would never use anything that was, um, you know, from a pet store or something like that. It would have to be from a veterinarian, anything I'm putting in my dog's ears. But this can be a little harsh as well. It's not something you need to do all the time. Sometimes I'll honestly just use a slightly damp piece of paper towel just to make sure the ears are nice and clean and dry before you take them down. Um, so I, I will do that and I will also, I usually leave the chin strap on for about three days and I will check and flip over the inside of the ear to make sure that it's clean, that it's not smelly, that it's not damp, that sort of thing while the chin strap is on. And you can do that without removing the tape. And uh, I guess the next most important part, of course, is removing the tape. And this was something where I also went and asked, I actually spoke to um, the pharmacist about uh, something that was human grade that wouldn't be harsh or alcohol based because I, that can really dry out the dog's ears. 
Um, friends of mine have been able to get something in the U.S. Um, and it's called, I know they use it on cropped ears as well, it's called Unisolve and it is available on Amazon, although I wasn't able to find it on Amazon.ca. So I actually, the pharmacist recommended, these are adhesive remover wipes um, designed for, for humans. Um, and they're really convenient because I can just take out a wipe per ear. Um, I also will use, this is just another product from the pharmacy. It's a uh, bandage remover that I will soak the, the actual tape in before I remove it, just so that it comes off nice and cleanly, doesn't take off any hair. But these um, adhesive removers are what will take off the, uh, the actual gummy part of the, of the bandage, the glue. And so you will have nice, clean, fresh ears after the tape comes off. And I always would leave them for a few days in between taping. Um, you can see if they settle on their own. If they start moving again, you can tape again. Um, but I wouldn't leave the tape on for more than three days. And I would always give them a break in between. And every dog is different. It's dependent on the ear leather, on the length of the ear, the set of the ear, that sort of thing. Um, but we have lots of great resources within the DPCC. Um, people who have imported uncropped dogs, that sort of thing, who can give you, I have a fantastic team of people who have helped me with this, um, and they will certainly be able to help you as well get through this process and have a dog with beautiful, nice, lying, uncropped ears. And so with that, I am going to bring my puppy out, and we will show you exactly how it's done. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, as I said, is I'm going to make sure the ears are nice and clean before I tape them. I've been lucky with her. Her ears are really, really clean naturally. Um, but I just want to make sure, since they won't be exposed to the air as much um, as they would be normally. see she's pretty used to this she's had it done quite a few times it's easier with two people of course um, but if you have a nice puppy that's not wiggly like mine is then it certainly can be done with one I'm sure and we always make it really really positive um, you know it's certainly not it's not something that needs to be a big deal it's not it's just you just make it part of your routine and so she hasn't had a tape on, tape on for, I'd say, about a week. Um, and her teeth are really coming in now. And so I don't know if you can see here, but this ear is hanging really nicely. You can see how it frames the front of her face. She's got a really nice high ear set. But it's this one, and it's been that way ever since she came home at nine weeks old. This is the one you'll see a little bit of, of lift in. And basically what we want to do, we don't want to pull the... We don't want to pull the skin on the head down. We just want to add a little bit of weight to the ears so they, they pull forward and they frame her, her little face. And so I have my three pieces of tape here already so that we can do it as quickly as possible. And so I'll take my first piece and I'll just flip her ear over her head and you can see that's where the tip is. And I will add a piece of tape right there so that it goes down and I kind of put the end of it where the uh, the crease is and I leave a little bit of flap right there and I just press it on flip that down and leave it for now and take the other piece which is the same length Sorry for crossing in front of the camera. And I put that on the same, the same way with a little piece hanging off the end, which is what I'm going to use to connect it. Just press it on. This tape is, is quite sticky, um, which is great. And any of that medical tape usually is. And so we have the two pieces here. Now 
This is where we form the chin strap. Now, most dogs don't have ears that are long enough to touch, and that's not, that's not a bad thing, because you want to always be able, the other dog is here, you want to always be able to put two fingers uh, between, like you should be able to fit two fingers in between the chin strap so that she can stay nice and comfortable. This is when she gets a little wiggly, but we can do it. Good girl. Okay. So we just tape this together. And what I'm going to do, remember that third piece of tape? I have that right here so that there is no sticky side exposed. If you do have a little bit, you can always turn it over just so she doesn't have any sticky side that's going to just catch on things. So you can see it's across, it's nicely across the ear there. I can fit two fingers in between so that she, it's not, it's not pulling down on her, on her head. It's just adding weight to the ear and we're, it's putting it in the place where it nicely fr frames her face instead of sticking out to the side. So she'll have that on for about three days and then we will take it off with our adhesive remover and hopefully as she finishes up teething this won't be something that she'll have to do very long. So thank you again for for listening and certainly you can get in touch with me or someone else within the DPCC if you have any questions and Apolda says thank you for watching.